Well, how do you start this conversation with a parent, a loved one? I think, uh, Chaplain John Eamon, we're going to turn to you. Uh, I'd say three things come to mind foremost. Um, the first is look for opportunities when they arise to have the conversation. Uh, one of the things that I discover very oftentimes with folks in the hospital is that there have been obvious opportunities uh, to have a conversation and they're passed up. Someone will remember that, oh, you know, she had an aunt who was in this situation, really terrible. Did anything come up in that conversation? No, we didn't talk about it. Uh, if there's any opportunity, go ahead and, and, and build upon that. If, if someone says, oh, I would never want to have all those tubes in me, or as someone else said to me just the other day out of the blue when talking about uh, uh, somebody said, you know, I don't care what they have to do to me. I want them to keep everything going until they just can't do any more. Well, however it comes up, say, you know, there are laws to safeguard what we want to have as our medical care. So why don't we write that down and move into the conversation building upon a way to help people feel empowered to act rather than sort of paralyzed by the thought of, of uh, of, of making out an advanced <coughs> directive. So, so building on uh, opportunities would be one thing. Uh, another thing would be to let the conversation be about what we do together, rather than something that I think you ought to do. You know, it's time to have the talk. Um, <coughs> it's not, it, it just has an entirely different feel when yeah, someone so says, I have an advanced directive and I think this is a great idea. You know, have you ever thought of having advanced directive? Or, you know, I think the family ought to have advanced directives. How about we do that together? That's a very different way to talk about any difficult subject, but especially here. That would be one way to, to, to do it. Model that in your family. And, and if you have everybody in the family doing this, it takes some of the dynamite out of the conversation. Every adult, I think, ought to have an advanced directive. So, you know, the 18-year-old the adult in the family, if he or she is filling out an advanced directive, that's going to have a normalizing effect on the whole process that will allow everybody to sense that this is not about dying. This is about claiming our rights to have our decisions respected and protected. And I might just point out, what are the big court cases around end-of-life care. You know, it's not the 95-year-old person, it's the younger person. So in some ways, one could argue that it's even at least as much or more important for the younger members of our families to have advanced directives than it is for, uh, for uh, uh, folks who are uh, elder. Uh, the third thing I would say is that I experienced that, and I think everyone would probably agree, that the, that the reason this is such a hard conversation to have is because it's about death and there's such a taboo, it's such a, an awkward thing. We, we have to be talking about death when we're talking about advanced directives. And you don't have to be talking about dying when you talk about advanced directives. You could be talking about designating a healthcare agent for any time that you're unable to speak for yourself in a medical decision. So if the living will portion of advanced directive is just shutting down the whole conversation, don't jump to that. S start the conversation around who do you want to have to make medical decisions if ever you're not able to participate directly in that decision-making process with your caregivers? Uh, once somebody has said, I want you to make that decision, if you said to me, you want me to make that decision for you, then my natural uh, next point would be, thank you very much, I will try my best to uh, live up to that honor and trust, but I don't want to be making assumptions. We need to have a conversation about what exactly are your values? Because I may think that I know what you want. You may think that I know what you want, but we might not agree. So that will lead into some specifics. Uh, so ways to take the, the dynamite out of the conversation by playing upon who we are to one another in relationship and about how this is an empowering process to protect our rights, that's the emphasis that I believe leads into a constructive discussion. And ultimately, the discussions that you have, if everybody is on board, if everybody agrees, if everybody knows, that's very important. Maybe even more important than having a document in a box somewhere. Uh, some way to get the communication up and running. That's great advice. 